Hi everyone, it's Living the Good Life and I have another uh, garage sale finds video for you this time from Friday, uh, July the 13th. This was a great sale. It was second on my list after that sale where I found all the jewelry for eight dollars. And uh, it looked like it was a really good sale. I pulled up early and I have found that I've got to get there early even if I just stand over in the corner and wait until they're ready for me um, to be able to get anything good. So I recommend that for you all as well. Here is what I found. It looks like it was a family who was going through their house and um, selling things from their um, parents. There was so much good stuff. You all would have loved this sale. Um, and it was so cheap. Everything you see here, I got for a total of $30. So let's go ahead and start. Number one, I got these fabulous flour and sugar canisters. I mean, the fl <laughs> they must have just emptied it. The flour and the little scoop is still in there. Um, they're in pretty good condition. They have, they're banged up. The um, manufacturer is on the bottom. And it is Lincoln. Oh, what does that say? Beauty wear. Okay. Uh, these were so cute. So, what I have figured is that since I got everything for $30, most of the stuff is about a dollar a piece. Um, oh, and they're going to have another sale in two weeks, and you know who's going to be there early. Um, the other thing I got were these mixer, little um, hand mixers. So here's one with the red and white handle. Here's one with the green and white handle. I couldn't pass those up. I can just like beat up egg beaters. These egg beaters, I can just beat something up, make some pancakes. I got an RS Germany cake plate. It's a cake plate because it has the two handles. This is from around 1915 to 1925, probably about 1920. Here is the blue mark. They come in blue and in green. Blue is generally older. There it is. Before this, uh, it would have been RS Prussia but you all have seen me collect for quite some time. I also got a Nippon tea strainer. There is no mark on it anywhere here, but it's very easily identified as Nippon based on the uh, decoration. Um, I got this big tin tray. I don't think it's really old on the back. It, it's still like this green color, but I had a feeling it was going to be cheap and I could just see from there what I, what the price they were going to give me. So a dollar is good. Um, I also got this chair. There was, the garage was full and then the backyard had quite a bit of things in it. Um, but we'd had a big rain the night before and they said they weren't able to get out as many things as they wanted to. So this sale in two weeks ought to be a blowout. So uh, here is this. I have done some research. This is a Welsh antique Welsh spinning chair and it's arts and crafts here's the carving in the middle and I found online this exact same carving on some chairs that were offered for sale by an antique um, auction company in England in 2016 but they would not say the price and so here is the seat I've actually, you may think this is rough, but you should have seen it before I got the cobwebs off and then used some furniture polish on it. Uh, the interesting thing is that it is, it's kind of, look at this mechanism back here. So it's just uh, put together in an interesting arts and crafts manner. Um, it's got a little crack right here and then one up there on the chair rail. But um, I think based on what I've, I've spent, this would have this cost me about five dollars. Because when I I brought this and a little box of jewelry up, and they told me uh, I was at twenty, and it would be ten more dollars for the chair and the box of jewelry. So <laughs> the chair cost me five dollars. Um, let's think what next. Got this plate. There wasn't much porcelain. I'm hoping that there's more next time. Um, this is a Limoges plate. Here's the, here it is. It's hand painted versus the transfer wear for that. So this is hand painted. I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is about 1890, 
um, to 1905. Uh, even though there is something on the back that I, what I may be really, really wrong, but here it says it's S and M Limoges, France. But there was a note on this, and it says this plate was supposedly a hundred years old when Isabel Houston owned it in um, approximately 1930. This is, I, I very deep, deeply do not believe that this is from 1830. So, uh, it, it just is completely wrong. It would never say Limoges, France. They didn't start putting France on anything until uh, 1891. So, I think I'm still good in the 1890 to, uh, 1890s to early 1900s. So, a dollar. That one was fun. I originally thought I was getting a, a Pyrex carafe, but this is... Um, in, I don't know why I have such, inland, and it still has this tag on it, which is so fun, and it's this gold, here is the little brochure, there it is, inland, carafe, and this makes me think of the things that Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and, um, Michelle with Thrifting 101 really loves, so shout out to them. And um, when I came bearing the jewelry in, I had found this tin and I loved it. I think the birds are just beautiful. So I'd had the jewelry all in here. It says, take home uh, the sweets. This tin contained um, uh, and it contained candy. Bluebird toffee made in England. So I thought I'm gonna put the jewelry in something pretty. <laughs> because <laughs> I needed something to, to uh, corral it all. Uh, it was all in an old jewelry box in a couple of boxes piled up on the back porch and uh, I dug through it and I found a few things. But before I get to that, let me just show you. I got this fork. There was a, uh, this is silver plate. I have doubled, I've tested it just to make sure. But I thought it was a really pretty meat fork. Um... I also got this. I had a, a little sugar and creamer that I decided I didn't like and I gave it back to them. And I got this in place of it. Um, it's just a little, a little jar. And I thought it had some British Hallmarks here, but it doesn't. It's just a real fancy EPNS mark right there. But I'm gonna polish up that lid. And that's pretty. I think cotton balls would be pretty in that in the bathroom. Um, I also got this. This is one of the first things I saw. I thought, uh oh, silver, silver. And it does have British Hallmarks on it. This one has, oh gosh, you know I can't see worth anything. There we go. I don't know if you can see it at all. But there is the, the lion, the anchor for Birmingham. And when I looked up this maker and this, uh, I couldn't find the maker, but I found the, the letter mark for the year. This little salt is from uh, 1892, and here is the spoon. It is also English. There are the marks there. It was actually, there's no, um, there's no anchor mark for Birmingham on this. There's just the, um, the lions, uh, the leopard head. So that is London, 1891. So those were fun. I found these two sterling uh, baby uh, uh, spoon and fork. So I just, it was in a little container with a whole bunch of um, souvenir spoons, so I just grabbed them all, and I thought, oh, I can get rid of them later. Well, I didn't, and they're all junk. <laughs> Here is another one of these three-pronged prong meat forks with the bone handle, and I'm thrilled to get that. Means I need to make more fried chicken, I guess. So here are all of the souvenir spoons that I got that I don't, I'm just going to sell at my next garage sale for 25 cents each if I can get that. Um, let's look at the jewelry now. Um, got these, and this was all in that jewelry box in the back. Uh, they say 925 right here. Uh, got a series of little sterling rings. $5 for all the jewelry. This I didn't think was going to turn out to be sterling, but I tested it. It looks like it is a freshwater pearl with something here on the side, pink stones. This did turn out to be sterling. 
Here's a little religious ring. It is sterling, uh, just a band, sterling band. And this, I didn't think it was going to be sterling, but it turned out to be sterling also when I tested it. I got this, which was I was really thrilled with. Uh, this says 925 Peru, and it has all these scenes on it, like there's a llama, etc. All on it. it. has a safety chain. Let's weigh it. And it is 50.37 grams of silver. Uh, so that was a good deal. I got this Cloisonne enamel rose necklace and uh, it has this barrel clasp so it's got a little bit of age on it uh, and then I got this choker I don't know why I just threw it in here I thought these were just so cute and I can't find any marks on those so they're probably nothing really there um, I got this this turns out to not be uh, sterling it's probably alpaca it sells says Mexico in here but it's nothing. Uh, it does have all that abalone. This, I couldn't even hardly get it to make a mark on the um, stone. It's an adjustable ring. I think, I don't think that it's anything, but it really had some decent workmanship there. Um, and then I found this. I wasn't even sure that this was going to be anything, but I threw it in the, in the bag, and it turns out both pairs of earrings are 10 karat gold. Um, we can weigh those too. They are 2.84 grams of gold, and I think I worked it out that it's around 50 or 60, uh, about $50 worth of gold. Um, so I hope you enjoyed everything. I had so much fun at this garage sale, and I cannot wait to get back <laughs> next in two weeks when they do the follow-up. I'm going to have to bring two bags to bring everything. Thanks so much, and I would love to hear your comments, and if you have any ideas about any of these things, uh, I would love to hear from you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.